Hello bookie, this is Online Book Club, I'm Chinelo and it's 2024. This new year is about making meaningful connections, living better and getting your bag up. But how? How do we go about it? Well, I'm not a business guru, but thankfully I'll be interviewing someone who is. Mr. Stan Guizdak, he's a successful businessman with many years of experience and he has written a book, Karmic Selling, which provides some sort of paths to achieving all these with kindness at its roots. Yes, kindness. Betty, they didn't see that coming. Before we begin the interview, let's get to know him better. Hello, Mr. Stan. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you, Chinelo. Okay, I want to start with pointing out how the advice you offer in your book contrasts with the norm. When new entrepreneurs are looking for business advice, they are often told to follow the traditional success at all costs approach. But in your book, Karmic Selling, you offer a different philosophy centered on authenticity, kindness, and service-oriented strategies. So what sets Karmic Selling apart and why is it worth staring away from conventional wisdom? Many years ago, when I quit the corporate world in July of 2005, and I was thrust into having to start my own business, which was a consult a management consulting firm. And when I started it, I realized, uh-oh, I'm not a sales guy. <laughs> I don't know how to sell. I've never sold anything before. Uh, and I jumped into having to become that sales guy of either sell something or I didn't eat uh, as well. So I, I really, after trying a bunch of different things and reading tons of different books on sales, there's a bunch of different scripts. There's a bunch of different things out there overall, but I really started what I found ended up being true to me and true to my character, which is it's in the, the middle of karmic selling the, the book as well. But I, I started doing karmic selling because I really didn't like the combative, the aggressive sales techniques and tactics that were being used by other people. And as I mentioned just a second ago, I wanted to be true to me. I found that by cultivating customer intimacy and looking to help the customers by putting them first and really asking the customer the question of how can I help you instead of how can I sell you ended up going much, much further and actually going and in, in being successful. I then also started training others on how to do karmic selling as well. And I found that really anyone can become a great salesperson if they truly put the person that's sitting across the table from them, put them first and help them rather than sell them. And the karmic selling really has delivered huge success time after time. And during my own personal career, I've sold everything from when I was a kid, I sold seeds door to door. I sold services and management consulting services and even solar panels as well. So I found that karmic selling worked in every industry and works in every industry and around the world as well, because truly the principles of kindness and altruism are universal. They aren't just uh, something here in the US. And, and you see the industry tell sales tactics and techniques can be different by industry but the sales principles really remain the same, regardless of what you're selling and, and whatever niche you're in as well. And I've even seen physicians, and actually there's a physician on the, on the back of the book or in, inside the cover of the book, that he is using it in his practice after reading the book and even supply chain directors, and there is a supply chain director in the middle of the book as well, they're adopting the karmic selling system and process because they've seen how it can work and they've seen also how it can help encourage patients or communicate new ideas across their company that works best for them and their business and aligns to their own personal values as well. Okay, let's talk evidence. You've had an extensive career in various roles and industries. Could you share a challenging moment in your corporate journey where adopting the principles of karmic selling helped you overcome? That's a perfect question. Thank you. Uh, tons of adversity and tons of overcoming, <laughs> overcoming challenges over the years. 
I think the biggest one, when I look back to July of 2005, and when I started my first consulting firm, I was only 38 years old. I started the beginning of Karmic Selling, started utilizing tools such as LinkedIn and other things to reach out to potential decision makers. And at that time, I reached out to an individual that worked at General Dynamics. And he was asking a question of how to drive continuous improvement and how to drive a culture of change management in his business as well. This is when LinkedIn actually had a section called answers and it was where people would ask questions and you could give answers uh, as well. I answered the questions for him and I asked him for his email address. And I honestly, I sent him the answer. I sent him everything. I sent him the training. I sent him the approach. I gave him my notes on how I've done that at different businesses as well. So in effect, I started at that point karmic selling and I gave away 100% of the answer. The good news on the other side of that, he called me back and said, wow, nobody gives anything away for free. Well, I said, well, I do. And we met face to face and that landed my first large consulting firm when in, in my, con, my first consulting business, and that was at a time when it was just myself in the consulting firm. I didn't have anybody else around me as well. I think that's really great advice. But unfortunately, there will always be people who want to take advantage of goodness, of kindness. So how do you strike a balance between giving, as I emphasized in karmic selling, and receiving? And, make, and making sure your efforts are reciprocated. What advice do you have for people who fear that having a giving mindset in the business world might need to be taken advantage of? The very, very good question, Janela. Thank you. There's many times uh, along the journey of doing this as well, and there's many times where I took a step back and said, wow, is, is this really worth it? Is it working? What I can say is in my experience, when I've put good out into the world and I've, I've answered the questions for free, I've given the advice for free, and I've done it in a way that I call, I don't have a hook. So from the customer's perspective, I don't have a hook in them and saying, say, I'll use this as an example, say, Chanelo, I will do this for you. However, you do this for me instead. So the old, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. I don't do that. I give it away for free without a hook. And what I found in life is when I give it all away for free, it does come back to me tenfold. I've had moments of doubt uh, and I've ensured that it has come back to me many, many times in the world as well. And in that sp spirit of service, I end up building trust and momentum. And I start building a circle of trusted friends, business associates, and those things that pay results, tremendous results over time as well. Sometimes people have taken advantage of me, but I always assume that the person sitting across the table is not gonna take advantage of me, but I've never regretted being kind and kindness itself is its own reward. But also on the back end of that, I've also gotten a lot of business as a result of that too. So the pros are way greater than the cons. That's that's good to know. So, so the pros of karmic selling is what's good is you can be true to your inner self and you look to help versus looking to sell. And you end up on the pro side, you end up gaining business because you've gained, gained trust with the individual sitting across the table from you. On the con side, you may have people take advantage of you. Uh, what I found in life though, the percentage of people that take advantage of you versus the people that are more like-minded, the percentage take advantage are a smaller percentage. So I don't worry about that smaller percentage and they end up weeding themselves out of my life on, on their own. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. Wow, that is really inspirational. Let's let's talk about the origin, how it started. You mentioned in your book that a life-threatening car accident served as a catalyst for your transition from a traditional corporate career to a philosophy rooted in 
kindness and authenticity. Can you share more about the pivotal moments and realizations that inspired you to write Kamik Selling? Thank you for that. It was uh, November 17th, 2004. I was driving a Mazda Miata and a large Mack truck pulled down in front of me, and I went under the Mack truck. In many regards, I probably shouldn't even be sitting here today, uh, but I am, and I'm thankful for that. So knock on wood, it was not my time to, to, leave, this, to leave this earth at that time. That car wreck made me take a step back, reevaluate my life, change my life for the better. And it took decades of trying, decades of trial and error and making changes both inward of myself, but then also externally as I was looking to win business from other people as well. And I've also taught others on how to do the karmic selling. And what I found in training others was the holes that I didn't think about in my own head but in training people to do that, I've been over over the years, over, over decades, have been able to modify the approach. So instead of it being, hey, become exactly like Stan, because nobody can be me, just like nobody can also be Chanelo. At the end of the day, it's all about being true to your internal self. And I've modified that approach. So it's more of a generic guide on how to do things, how to lead meetings, how to take notes, how to prep for meetings, how to follow up and how to build a circle of trusted friends and business associates that you go forward with. So I've made it so that it's not just stand centric, it can work for anybody as well. Okay, I can already see how valuable karmic selling is in professional life. But how about beyond that? How do you integrate karmic selling into your personal life? Are there specific aspects you find equally valuable for personal relationships? Absolutely. Uh, doing good actually feels good in your heart as well. And I approach the world in a manner of how can I help you? And whether that's I'm on a bus, whether that's I'm on a train, I'm on an airplane, or I'm seeing somebody in a uh, convenience store and I comment on, on their outfit or their hair of how I thought it was very nice. But I approach the world with that however I can help mindset in every relationship in my, in my life, from my family to my community to the world at large. And I'm really always thinking about how can I be of service to others? Examples. Uh, open the door for somebody and let them in ahead of you. You'll normally get a smile and a thank you. Uh, ask your waiter or waitress their name. Many times people think of waiter waitresses as just somebody to bring them food, but you ask them their name and you greet them by name, it, it causes them to take a step back and, and give you a little smile. Put somebody's bag in the overhead bin if they're struggling on an airplane. All of those small little things in life, it's amazing how it feels good and you get a warm feeling inside when somebody looks you in the eye, gives you a thank you, and many times I've gotten hugs as well as a result. Another piece on the personal side is a big principle of karmic selling is preparation and getting ready, ready and prepped to know the person on the other side. And it actually helps me in my day-to-day -day life as well. So my friends, I'm, I'm interested in what's going on in their life. So I strive to be prepared not only in business settings, but also on the personal side as well. And for every engagement that I have with another human being, I look for it to be a positive one from their perspective. And it's really another way of, of showing kindness and respect to them by showing interest to them as well. Another key on the personal side and even on the professional side is always doing what you say you're going to do. So if you're gonna meet a friend at the movies at six o'clock, you're there at 5.45, uh, you, you aren't late. Uh, or if you are, you call and say, I'm sorry, I ran into traffic, I'm running late. But that's really the way to integrate it into a personal side so that it becomes part of your muscle memory as a human. So that when you're sitting there in a business situation as well, you're not having to put on a cloak of, aha, I'm a salesperson now. You can actually just be you in the meeting itself. 
and it makes you more comfortable and more approachable also. I am curious, if you could travel back in time and give your younger self a piece of karmic advice, what age would you visit and what would you say? I would go back to when I started my first business and I quit the corporate world in July of 2005. I believe I was 38 years old. I would go back to myself and I would stand in front of myself and I would put my hand on my shoulders, look myself in the eye and say, hey, bud, it's going to be a great ride going forward. Stay true to you. Stay true to yourself. Know that there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows on your journey, but don't stop being kind and helping others. You will succeed and you will reap the benefits further years down the road. Reviewers at Online Book Club have expressed appreciation on the emphasis you placed on genuine connection, kindness, and authenticity in the workplace. Could you tell us how these values have positively impacted your relationships with clients and colleagues? And can you share a success story where these principles have led to a meaningful connection with clients? So in my consulting company, we're currently working with a business that's a, an advanced robotics organization and a sophisticated, sophisticated developer of those products and techniques. We are not experts in robotics, but we do know how to design, manufacture and deliver products efficiently and, and cost effectively as well. And we've helped them achieve this year their business objectives with our collegial support and our team approach with their internal company as well. And when we're working with them, we're bringing a collegial spirit of helping and supporting, and we've earned their trust and repeat business year over year. As a matter of fact, this particular engagement we're on with them now is our 10th engagement with them uh, over the past several and many years as well. Now that is a success story. Let's talk about your legacy and impact. You reveal in the book how you have um, built your career on helping others. So what do you hope to leave behind as your legacy in the business world, not just in the business world, your personal life also? What do you hope to leave as your legacy? A book and for me personally and for my business, I'd love for my legacy to reflect that we can all be successful and do very well at doing good and being kind. I think that's awesome. That's, that, that makes for a very good legacy. Okay, a challenge for your readers. If you could advise your readers to perform one karmic act today, what would it be and how would it impact their lives positively? Good one. I, I think trying it both in your personal and business life is actually a good idea. But really looking to adopt the however I can help mindset. It could be try it out today. Uh, get to know your barista making your coffee. Compliment your partner, your husband, your wife. Uh, thank me later uh, for that one. Hold the door open for somebody. Buy a coffee for the person in the line behind you. Buy somebody flowers. Compliment somebody on their hair, uh, their makeup, their, their dress, whatever it may happen to be, but give out into the world. And it's amazing the feeling you will get inside when you get that sense of, wow, I really touched that person today and I made a meaningful impact in them. It's huge. The warmness in your heart that you get, it actually starts becoming a drug. I know it has for me. And it's impacted me positively by all of the people that I've connected with and touched over the years as well. I'm, I'm obviously not the guy though that invented random acts of kindness, uh, do unto others. You reap what you sow, even back in the days of the VCR, be kind, rewind. I'm not the guy that invented that. However, for years and decades, people have been etolling the benefits of kindness forever. 
But what I'm saying is it's really not just about how it helps others. It actually helps you as well. You feel good inside. And sometimes as a sideline result of that, you end up selling something as well. And by the way, you will be successful. Yeah, a compliment could go a long way to make somebody's day better. Okay, one final question to round up this interview. In summary, what are the two big lessons on karmic advice you think readers should take home? Can succeed by being authentic and kind and really looking at the approach for number two of instead of how can I sell you, how can I help you? If you do this, you will be tremendously successful at sales without being pushy, without being arrogant. And if you stay in the mode of helping, of how can I help you, instead of how I can sell you, you will earn the trust of the person across the side of the table because they will feel it and they will know you are looking to help them. And you'll ultimately cultivate closer relationships, you'll build success over time, and you'll enrich your life both from a monetary perspective, but both also that personal perspective of the warmness in your own heart of doing good for others as well. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Stan. I personally have learned a lot today, and I think your book is really great and filled with a lot of practical advice. Okay, guys, we've come to the end of our interview with Mr. Stan Gwizdak. If you want to check all those major boxes in your new year resolution, then be kind, be authentic, compliment people whenever you can. Also, read the book, Karmic Selling. It's inspired a lot of wisdom and a lot of karmic principles you can apply to your life. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll be there to answer. Have a nice day and happy new year once again. Bye.